Hi everyone. Uh, so as I was introduced, my name is Armen. Uh, I'm a Google developer expert for Angular. So uh, obviously, as always, we're going to talk a bit about Angular. Thankfully, no one else is talking about it. <laughs> so today's uh, topic is called building performant applications with Angular. And it sounds a bit clickbaity because it is, we are going to talk only about one topic, not about everything. So uh, let's discuss Angular performance, performance of Angular applications and understand how, what we can do about it, how can we improve it. First, let's understand the problem. Uh, let's see what's the biggest performance pitfall of Angular. Uh, and I guess you already understand uh, what I'm going to say about it. Of course, this is zone-based change detection. So we're going to talk about change detection today. That's the, that's the topic, that's the real thing that we're going to tackle. Uh, so, why is Zone.js bad or kind of bad? Well, first of all, it involves a third-party library. Uh, it involves a library that is not built by the Angular team and requires maintenance uh, both from the Angular team. Sometimes they are sort of forced to go into Zone.js, create pull requests, work with the team that maintain, maintains Zone.js. Uh, and it, of course, as a third-party dependency, it increases our bundle size. That's already not ideal. Uh, and it is something that is always necessary. We, at this point, cannot run an Angular application without Zone.js. Uh, also, it introduces lots of problems. Uh, we will uh, discuss about uh, how exactly Zone.js uh, works next, uh, but it can run for whatever reason. Uh, it can impact performance without actually doing something. Okay. Uh, and it can be sometimes unpredictable. Uh, I mean, if you work with Angular, who of us has not encountered the expression changed after it has been checked error or warning or whatever it's called? Uh, but it's terrible and most of the time we just ignore it or try to, you know, find a workaround or something. Uh, this is because of Zone.js. This is what we want to get rid of. And we will talk about the past the present, what we have now in terms of like optimizing Zone.js performance. And we will talk about the future, how we are trying to, you know, ditch Zone.js. So first of all, let's discuss uh, what exactly is zone-based change detection. So Zone.js, you know, third-party library, what it does, it patches our browser APIs like, I don't know, add event listeners, set timeout, whatever. Uh, and it uh, notifies Angular about some async events. Well, why is it this way? Because when we run an Angular application, this is what happens. Uh, first, we have an app, uh, it renders some UI and has some state, right? Some uh, properties in our component classes and so on. Then what Angular team uh, thought about it, and they were actually correct, they thought that, okay, if I have a rendered UI, and it depends on the state. The state can only change after the initial render, only as a result of some asynchronous event. So what if we were notified about asynchronous events and just went on to check if anything changed? So this uh, uh, awesome graphic here shows us a component tree uh, with some component uh, at the root and what here happens is that uh, there is a child component somewhere in the subtree, let's say the component name D, and there is an asynchronous event there, like user clicks a button in component D. And after this, Zone.js receives a notification that, uh, you know, this API worked, something happened, an event listener or whatever. Uh, after this, Angular starts change detection from the root component. So what happens, Angular will just go and say, okay, this changed here, this changed here, and so on, okay? Uh, this is, of course, not a very, no, oh, sorry, push the previous slide. Uh, this is, of course, not ideal because uh, it involves checking uh, lots of components for no good reason. Like, we don't exactly know where the change happened. But we need to change, change everything. Uh, before, to, before moving to zone list, like before ditching zone, just let's first answer what can, we can do about it. 
So we can also better imagine it. Of course, one approach is use on push change detection strategy, which is you know popular. Everyone who works with Angular knows that okay, this is one way to do it. But uh, very often uh, people you know stop at just marking a component as on push and thinking that okay, that, that's the limit of what I can do, but that's not exactly true. Uh, you can actually with on push you can split components into subtrees. Uh, and use on push on all of those components and this is better because it's better to have five components small each of them is on push instead of it having one big component that is also marked as on push so that is also a strategy just splitting the component into component subtrees and using on push strategy is already kind of great for performance uh, if we use third-party libraries, we can use the ng zone reference and call run outside Angular. So we, if we register third-party libraries, like I don't know, chart GS or whatever we are using with um, our Angular app, it registers event listeners. We don't want zone GS to look at those third-party libraries because we don't care about it. Those libraries manage themselves. We don't need zone GS to go there and perform any checks. So we can optimize this way. Uh, and of course, we can use the Angular DevTools profiler and see where we have problems, unstable state, too many async events. So, actually, lots of stuff that we can do about uh, zone based change detection. Okay? Uh, why I'm talking now about the on push strategy specifically? Well, we know about on push. We know that it uh, okay, checks the component only if its inputs have changed. Uh, that's not entirely exactly what it does. It also, you know, doesn't uh, perform deep checkings and so on. Uh, in this case, uh, it also kind of ignores like sibling components. So, so like in this scenario, uh, we have uh, again this component that has a button click. It notifies on JS, but only its ancestors are being checked in this scenario because it is marked as on push. Uh, why is it important to know about this? Because even without going zoneless, there are optimizations that can use uh, this approach. Okay, can use on push now with some strategies and understand how it can uh, improve. Okay. Uh, so, how do we get rid of zone JS? How do we move in that direction? Well, this is. Uh, here is a screenshot from Angular GitHub. Actually, they have uh, a project dedicated entirely to zoneless. Uh, well, this one says zoneless we don't push. This is just a subtree of all the issues that they have. But uh, it's a very transparent process, and it involves signals. Okay, signals have not been introduced into Angular just for you know being fancy. They were actually introduced with the idea that in the future we will use this to get rid of zone.js and move on uh, to a new approach of change detection, okay? And here uh, we will use just signals and we will use signal-based components, okay? Signal-based components are not available yet, but they are kind of promised to drop in V18, uh, hopefully. So let's understand what are those signal-based components and what's the difference, okay, between uh, so this is a uh, hypothetical okay, signal-based component uh, and it looks essentially just like any other component. Uh, it just has this metadata here, it says signals true. Uh, this is how it will look, like the API probably will be exactly like this. Uh, here we can only work with signals. We have signals of computed values and in the template we can only use signals. What, what, what do I mean when I say we can only use signals? Uh, I mean that if I want my UI to be updated, actually, dynamically, I need to use signals always. I can use just, you know, regular properties of the class, which would work, but only would work once. Um, one amazing way of understanding, well, how is change detection working here? Uh, uh, if you notice this comment, it's not really well visible, but it's a change detection option it doesn't make sense here. So you don't make a signal-based component strategy on push, okay? There is no such idea. Uh, what you do, actually, uh, you can imagine that the template of this component is just inside an effect, okay? Uh, so all the signals that you use here will trigger a change detection and, uh, well, eventually, if necessary, re-rendering of the UI. You don't need zone.js for this. 
uh, you will just use signals, and these components will be sort of detached from the whole, you know, ZonGS story. ZonGS is on its separate thing, and uh, you don't need ZonGS in this scenario. That's the goal that we are moving to. Yeah? Uh, again, uh, as we say, as we like saw in the uh, code example, it is similar to any other class, okay, any other component that we write. It's detest detached from the rest of change detection. What I mean by detached, I mean that uh, other components can still be zone-based. You can migrate your application, you will be able to migrate your application. Uh, if you are using a classical, you know, zone-based app, you will be able to switch to signal, signal-based, and eventually, you know, ditch uh, zone.js entirely. And it has this cool thing called granular change detection. Let's see what that means. Uh, well, I already mentioned these talking points, okay? Uh, let's understand what we mean by granular change detection. What we mean by granular change detection? Well, uh, in zone-based apps, as we noticed, we uh, had uh, change detection starting from the root of the application, okay, at component, and then move down uh, to its children, their children, and so on. Uh, with signals, we can be way more precise, as I mentioned. Okay, let's imagine the template is an effect, and uh, some signal updated, okay? Angular knows that the signal has changed its value. How it will change the tag? Well, first of all, if it will begin from that exact component. You, it doesn't make sense to begin from the root. Why begin from the root? I already know that this particular signal in this component changed. But they went on even further. Actually, it, it is something that is called granular change detection, and it is based on template views. So what is a view? Uh, a view from Angular's perspective, and Angular is rendering, is a piece of template that is sort of separated from the uh, other flow okay, of the template. In this scenario, for example, every component that has a template, that template is a view itself. Okay? So this entire thing, this entire HTML we see here, is a view. It has also embedded views. Here we use the for syntax to render lots of uh, app post components. Okay? And uh, every time that we render it, we create a new view. We create multiple views that each of them contains this component. Then this component itself also has its own view its template and maybe other embedded views there. Uh, and we, here we have this uh, if statement uh, that renders another template and this automatically creates another view. When I say view, you can just imagine an ng template. You don't exactly see explicitly the ng template here, but it's essentially the same thing. If you remember when you use like the ng if statement, it actually creates an ng template and then uh, uses uh, the uh, ng if um, expression that we provide to determine if it should embed or not embed the view. Uh, in this scenario, it's just not ng if, it's just using the if statement, but it works exactly the same way. Uh, when I say view based, what happens is that, uh, for instance, here, that I say uh, for post of posts, and I have a signal called posts, okay, an array of something. If I update this array, I uh, using some function or whatever. Angular will know, okay, this signal changed, and it will look at the uppermost view that it can find that this signal is used. So in this scenario, this view with this for statement is sort of the highest place in the template where the signal can be found, and it can just start change detecting from there. It doesn't even need to change detect this entire component, okay? If I have a bunch of other HTML here, for example, but that is not working with this, you know, post signal, then it will not change the tag this. And it's, uh, you know, super performant, obviously, because I skip multiple checking. Uh, there were discussions to go even more granular, like uh, why don't we do bindings? Well, change detection is essentially checking bindings, right? So if change detection works here, it will look at this binding and say, okay, for this app post component, uh, has this uh, inputs value changed? And if so, okay, I need to do something about it. That's what change detection is. Uh, but in the end, they decided against it because it would uh, sort of require lots of uh, stuff in memory. Um, so they sort of ruled this away, but view-based granular change detection is still going to be miles way performant 
okay, than what we have with Zone.js. Uh, well, what can we do right now that we don't have like zone list at this moment? We don't know when will and how will the signal-based components drop, but probably VA18, but I mean, not e exactly. We can go zone list right now. For example, we can uh, just use signals, use on push everywhere, and sort of dish zone.js right now, experimentally, which is almost guaranteed to cause problems. So don't do that. You can try it out if you want to see how it can work and so on, but just don't do it in your you know, production applications. What you realistically could do, you can, for example, uh, detach certain views. Well, you can detach the entire app, as I mentioned, but detaching some views can be useful. For example, if you have, uh, if you have uh, a footer component, okay, that has, I don't know, static data and so on, you don't need to go change the in there. Or you, you know in some places the data won't change, okay, throughout the life cycle of the app, you can go use the change detector ref call detach and you know, be done with that component. That's also uh, an optimization. Uh, but uh, the awesome thing that we can do, and it's very simple to do, it doesn't really require much you know, effort, you can use local change detection, they call it local change detection. What it means, it means using a on push component and only relying on signals uh, for uh, you know, that component's change detection. So essentially you pretend that your component is signal based, even if it's not yet. Uh, change everything to signals, or everything that uh, the, your template depends on, okay? You change everything to signals and set the change detection strategy to on push. Uh, what does that uh, accomplish? Well, first of all, it uh, prepares you for zone, zone list, okay? You already switch to signals and when real signal base and zone list drops, you can just say, well, okay, I will remove the on push strategy and just put signals through and be done. But what it does right now as a performance optimization, it actually uh, prevents uh, parent components and its uh, ancestors up to the app component from being change detected. Now, if your component is on push and a signal updates inside of it, change detection won't run for its ancestors. It will only run for that component. And uh, for zone-based apps, this is really huge, like this is a great uh, performance optimization. Uh, and it also sort of moves your component uh, in the direction of, uh, you know, zoneless that we will have. Uh, okay, I guess that's the topic I wanted to talk about. I will receive questions, hopefully, about it. Uh, I wanted to talk about my book a bit. Uh, yeah, I wrote a book. Uh, and uh, it's in early access. It's called Modern Angular and talks about everything that we discussed today and a lot more. Um, you know, with everything going on in the Angular community, we received lots of new stuff, new template syntax, dependency injections, standalone, um, server side rendering, and so on and so on. Uh, so, yeah. Everything is in the book. Uh, it's in early access. Most of it is now available and will probably you know, go into print next month. Uh, and uh, for today's event, the publisher was uh, very happy that I'm you know, talking at this conference. So they are, if you are interested, they are providing a promo code for a 45% discount. So if anyone is interested, I will be happy to you know, provide it. You can reach out to me next. Uh, and I guess that's it. Uh, I would love to hear questions if you have any.